Today we talk about Sync the Carrier, free print and play game. For those of you that complain that they only discuss uh, expensive games, you can get this one for free. And I want to keep this introduction short because there are many things I want to say about the game. This is a co-op game set in World War II, which is unusual. In the Pacific, the player or players will control four American airplanes looking for a Japanese carrier and once they find it, they're going to try to bomb it and sink it. All this before uh, their own carrier is sunk by the Japanese forces or before they lose too many airplanes. This is the general idea, let me show you how the game works. This is how the play area may look at the beginning. You have four airplanes, each with a display with a fuel track that has 12 boxes. And at the beginning, you have a uh, fuel marker on the 12th space of the track. You can play with four players. Each player maneuvers an airplane. You can split and you know assign the airplanes to a lower number of players. You can play the game solitaire, but you need to control all four airplanes. Also, each airplane has a set of three action cards, a search, move, and attack. The set is the same, and the group shares two land and launch cards. There are only two per group, that means that only two players per turn can choose that, uh, that action. Then you have um, a board here representing the American carrier, and you place the tokens representing your airplanes there at the beginning of the game. An area representing the uh, well, the, a board representing the area between the American carrier and the Japanese carrier, and then the Japanese carrier that you're trying to sink. That is your mission. At the beginning of the player's turn, the players select one of the actions available to them and they commit to that action. You can place a token on the action you selected, you can just pick up the card, but that is the action that you're going to execute that turn. After that, players will draw a card from this event deck and resolve the effect. Let me get, let me get closer to that area. The players, after committing to um, an action, they flip a card and first thing you look at this board and you see if there is a connection, meaning if you have enemy airplanes that are forming a continuous connected line from one of these orange areas to one of these uh, red areas. In this case, there is a full connection, in this case, there isn't. If there is a connection, that means that the Japanese are going to be able to attack the carrier with an airplane of this type here. In this case, that is a uh, bomber. Now, uh, you look at that small table there, I don't know if I can get close enough, there you go, that indicates the attack that is going to be launched against the, uh, against the carrier. You roll a single die with three or more, a bomber will inflict a hit on the carrier, with five or more, a fighter will inflict a hit, if there is a hit, you place a hit marker on that area there, and when the carrier takes three hits, then the carrier sinks and the players collectively lose the game. Uh, after you resolve the possible attack, in any case, you add to the board an airplane of the type indicated there, again, squares or circles, to the area indicated on the card, New Georgia Island, one green, and we place a new airplane there. There may also be other effects, for example, the Japanese player may add uh, combat patrol to the carrier, you may be instructed to add an airplane there to the combat air patrol of the carrier, up to two airplanes can be in that area. You may have effects that allow the carrier to move away and makes it harder to find the carrier, but I'll talk about that later. In any case, after you have uh, resolved the event card, you will finally get to execute the actions that you selected previously. If you selected a move action, then you can move by one zone, spending one fuel, or two zones, spending three fuels, and you will record the expenditure of fuels on your card there. So then you can move by one or by two, completely up to you. If you need to go back to the carrier, you can choose the move action, spend a single fuel, and from wherever you are on the board, you find yourself in the area on the, in the area where the carrier is, then you can select the land action, and you can land, so you cannot have everybody landing at the same time, try not to be out of fuel 
uh, you know everybody in the group at the same time if you have no fuel and you need to land then you can roll the dice but you need to roll a five and six if you want not to crash if you run out of fuel and you crash in the middle of the ocean yes you get a new airplane so you can play with a new airplane you're not out of the game but you have to add one of these symbols here to this track here when there are four such symbols there you lose the game that's another way in which players can lose the game if you are in an orange area you can choose the search action which will allow you to try to identify the location of the carrier you are all uh, three dice plus three dice is the base number of dice that you start the game with three dice plus 1d just because that's what the search action does gives you a plus one then plus 1d for each friendly plane searching on a different orange zone because if your airplanes are spread out that is more effective then you roll the dice and you just look at the results. With three of a kind, I would be able to raise my intel, which is on this track here, by one. So from that binocular pointing to zero, to point into one. If I have four of a kind, then I raise it by two. I need at least an intel of three to be able to attack the carrier to figure out where the carrier is. Card events may lower that value, making the carrier move away, and then I need to search for the carrier again. Now, when you're rolling for uh, for whatever is this that you're trying to do, you can re-roll as many times as you want. You can save some dice, re-roll as many, but the tricky thing is that if you roll a one, the one is locked. Each one that you roll is a point of fuel that you will lose. So actually, if you're attempting something big when you roll a lot of dice and you start re-rolling a lot and you get a lot of ones, you may crash in the middle of the ocean. The other action you can choose is the attack. If you are in the same area as an opponent, then you get to attack. You use your usual three dice, you spend a fuel, you get an extra die because that's what the attack does. Friendly planes in the same zone with attack action selected allow you to add a die and you do the same thing. You roll and you can re-roll the ones are locked and you're trying to get the results indicated by that table uh, let's get a little closer if you are attacking a bomber you need two of a kind to have one hit if you're attacking a bomber and you get three of a kind then two hits with fighters three of a kind is one hit four of a kind is two hits and that will allow you to destroy two enemy airplanes uh, if you land back on the uh, carrier, on your own carrier, after the uh, enemy has been discovered, you can also, on top of refueling, which is what you do when you go back to the carrier, you need to do that from time to time, on top of that you can also pick up a bomb. The bomb goes on your airplane card, and as you can see, as long as you carry the bomb, you have minus 1D for all of your rolls. That reduces the effectiveness of your airplane. But if you are in one of the orange zones, you select the attack action and you have a bomb, then you can use the bomb to attack the enemy carrier. You're trying to bomb it. However, you have to roll dice, you select the sector that you're attacking, there's the 4 sector, 5 sector and 6 sector, but if there is patrol there, you get minus 1 D, minus 1 die for each enemy that is patrolling. So you need to have probably concentrated attacks, friends that are taking care of those guys as you go in with the bombs, also you get the benefit from having several players attacking at the same time. Another way in which you raise the number of dice that you can roll is by eliminating enemies in combat. For each three enemies that you eliminate, you can exchange those enemies with a metal token, and the metal token will grant you an extra die each time that you roll. To attack the Japanese carrier, you need to have a bomb, you choose to attack, you choose one of the three sectors, you roll the number of dice that you would usually roll, so you need to have a good initial number so that after the reduction from those guys and from having the bomb, you may still be able to roll at least three of a kind or four of a kind. You can reroll as usual, once are locked, etc. Et uh, numbers mean success with that number or more. So actually, if you choose to attack that sector, you will deal a hit with four 
fours, four fives, or four sixes. Here I hit with four fives or four sixes, here only with sixes. But if you manage to have four of the required kind, you inflict the number of damages indicated here, one damage, two damages, three damages, so that really means that if you manage to place a bomb right there, you inflict three points of damage, which is all it takes to destroy the carrier, you win the game. But trust me, it is not an easy feature to pull off. And uh, if you do not get four of a kind, you only have three, you can still choose to drop the bomb, but then you have to roll again and you need to have a five or six. You roll the number of dice equal to the points of damage of that area, so two dice here, three dice here. If you roll a five and six, the bomb still deals a hit, otherwise you just waste the bomb. And this is pretty much how the game works. The players are trying to become proficient pilots, figure out where the carrier is, and to send the enemy carrier before their own carrier is sunk. But as I said, there is also a time factor here. The first turn lasts exactly 14 minutes, or 10 turns, that is 10 event cards, whichever hits first. If you resolve the 10 events, then the turn is over, you can catch your breath and then you start the second turn which will be two minutes shorter so it will be either 10 events or 12 minutes and the next one will be 10 events or 10 minutes. If you run out of time and you didn't complete 10 events, then you flip the number of cards that you need to go to 10 and you resolve all of the effects in a row before your airplanes can do anything. We completed uh, a turn, well, we completed 14 minutes turn, we only resolved six cards, now we flip four, we add all of these airplanes, the carrier moves away by one space, that is you lower the intel, you may add patrol, but the problem is really there are just many more airplanes that are added to the board, so when the next turn starts probably there will be many enemies here, it will be likely that you will have a connection that you will have to defend against bad stuff. Fun. The game is fun. We really had a good time playing this one. The timing factor is crucial. If you want to play uh, the game and take your sweet time, you can. Actually, there's an option of playing the game with uh, as much time as you want. You just, in that case, have three rerolls. But actually, the timing factor is really important because even rerolling becomes a problem. You can do it as much as you want as long as you don't hit a one, but the other players are looking at you and that result doesn't come up and when it comes, yes, everybody around the table really gets excited because they have been waiting for that result while the time was ticking. Another good uh, factor here that is created by the timing thing is that players are forced to act as a team. Once you decide what everybody's going to do, we're going to attack that area, I'm going to clear that line here, you're going to support me as I try to bomb the carrier, then you have to trust that the players are doing what you agreed on. You really have to work as a team. It is are hard for a player to jump in and be the leader of the entire thing so that by itself takes care of the so-called leader problem that you have in some cop games and then the game just moves faster and faster the turns becoming uh, shorter and shorter then you always have larger attacks at the end of each turn and it really creates this sort of sense again of the mounting danger as the team is getting closer and closer as the team learns how to work as a team and it, you're working better but you have uh, to see if you're going to be able to perform as a team well enough to stop the momentum that the Japanese are gaining. So I have a completely positive impression about this game. Maybe it is not too hard to beat but you can um, choose options to make it harder. Start with two dice as your base number instead of three or use three airplanes instead of four. You will see the thing get much tougher. You can scale it that way. The way in which you cannot scale it very much it's precisely this, that is to reduce the number of airplanes to keep the complexity and the difficulty actually more or less the same. If you have less airplanes, the game is going to be harder and harder. Uh, that means that if you're playing it solitaire, which is perfectly possible, you have to be able to play with all the airplanes, four or three, depending on what you choose. Uh, this could be the, little, the, the only small limitation that I can see, but it is really a small one. When you think about the price, which is just the paper and the ink, uh, it is a game that is 
is not hard to build. You have to make the cards, but it is not too much work. If I made it, you can make it. Uh, and what you get after you build your copy is a cop game that can be picked up easily, creates a strong sense of tension, makes the players work together like a good cop should, and overall delivers a really fun experience. Seeing the Carrier is a game that I enjoyed a lot. I hope you print your own copy because I think you can have fun with this one.